Hey everyone, today we're tearing down the RX 5700 non-XT card. We already did the review of this one, so if you want the full numbers, thermals, acoustics, and some gaming and overclocking performance, you can check through you for that. But if you'd like to see how it's constructed and if it's built well, then this is the video to watch. Uh, so this is the Power Color Red Dragon 5700, and we're going to open it up today. Before that, this video is brought to you by Gigabyte's X570 Master Motherboard. The X570 Master is what we use for all of our Ryzen 3000 CPU reviews and for extreme overclocking streams with the 3900X. The Master is built to handle more current than you'll push through your Ryzen CPUs. It has actual finned heat sinks for the VRMs, and it features a massively overhauled Gigabyte BIOS. Pick up the X570 Master for your Ryzen 3000 CPU at the link in the description below. This cooler is pretty simple. The Red Dragon is a cheaper model. This is supposed to be $360, which puts it $10 over MSRP for the reference model, which as a reminder, looks like this. And the power color model is a dual axial, clearly, instead of a blower fan. It is better in thermal performance in significant ways. It's especially better at noise normalized thermals where you set an equal noise level for both and then test only the thermal response after that. So cooling wise, it did pretty well. Overclocking, they're all a toss-up based on silicon lottery, memory lottery, all that stuff. But uh, we need to open it up. So two fans. In terms of sizing, it is a proper two-slot card. As you can see, in fact, it's a little bit less than a two-slot card based on the how it doesn't quite come over all the way to the slot. But it's a two-slot card. Let's get a length measurement just for people who want that. The height is non-standard. So you measure like... Uh, I should just do the shroud size. Let's do that. So that's 97 millimeters. And for point of reference, that's 120. So that may be a limiter for you, but the thickness should not be. If you're using a really small case, mini ITX case, this extra height might limit you. But anyway, two fans. The fans are connected with just three screws, so they're not socketable or anything special like that. Uh, they do use cables, so not special in that regard either. The design's pretty straightforward. Um, Power color basically heard a lot of people complaining about their gamer e designs and people saying they wanted something more professional or simple, and so that's what this is supposed to address. Is that a warranty void if removed sticker? Yes. Bad job. Bad job, power color. No illegal, unenforceable warranty void if removed stickers, please. Uh, other countries you can get away with it, I guess, but anyway. We don't like those. So four spring tension screws. We'll track these on the mod mat. And then we've got the toolkit I'm using today, GN toolkit. Uh, also technically, as I've often made this comment, the sticker was not removed, merely damaged. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net if you'd like to pick up our toolkit that we used for video card teardowns. It was specifically specced and built for video card teardowns. And the mod mat's up there as well. If you'd like a grounded, uh, high friction service to help keep track of your items and keep things safe. All right, so four screws are out. Sometimes the cooler will separate straight away with that, but this one is probably secured additionally by these two screws, which likely go through the PCB and the base plate. Also spring tension, I'm gonna set those aside separately because they're slightly bigger screws. Yep, that was it, okay, easy enough. That was very quick disassembly. Six screws to get this far. That's nice. It makes it easy to repaste. Repasting, by the way, you should be careful with on the 5700 series. It's very easy to get a bad junction temperature by doing it, which starts to call into question repasting any card, really. But uh, so first thing we see, the memory thermal pads are, in fact, the correct size. Good job, power color. The most basic possible thing done right. And that's not a power color disc. That's an MSI comment on the Evoke. Uh, so yeah, two extended cold plate here for the memory. There's a copper cold plate right in the middle. Let's move this all center. Copper cold plate in the middle for the GPU, and that's sinking into the fin stack and into some copper heat pipes. There are one, two, three, four, five heat pipes from this side entering through, and then you've got one of them exiting here and one exiting up here uh, north of the memory. So. Fairly smooth the cold plate, the surrounding areas for the memory. These are ultimately sinking into the same cooling solution, which is the fin stack. However, the memory over here has some exposure to this fan, which actually is beneficial to memory 
coil and performance, as we saw in the Gigabyte 5700XT review. Uh, one of the reasons it did well was because even though these this plate doesn't have direct contact with the fin stack, and also doesn't really have direct contact with the copper heat pipes, the heat pipes end up terminate or uh, exiting the chamber here more in this area, so there's no contact here. But in spite of all of that, there is some contact back here, and more importantly, there's airflow down to the plate, and airflow is kind of the cane of cooling. So that did well, reasonably for memory thermals. We haven't tested it versus other AIB cards yet, but versus reference, it was certainly pretty good. And uh, that explains why. This is gonna be your bridge fan cable up there, which terminates down here to plug into the board. There's a separate plate for the uh, VRM thermal pad, and then you've got thermal pads for memory, stuff like that. So this is all really pretty simple design. Uh, there's also a noise damping bumper over here to, to mitigate noise from vibration as the uh, cooler maybe stretches down toward the PCB. Okay, so 5700 die. The memory for what it's worth is Micron on this particular card, and we actually did have really good performance out of this one for memory. We maxed it out for the 5700 max is at 930 megahertz, but uh, we can unlock it and try and do more later. It does have a dual BIOS up here. We talked about this in the review. That switch up there is dual BIOS. Left is OC mode, right is silent. The OCV BIOS is being reworked as we speak. Uh, in our review, we found that the RPM was ramping kind of in an incorrect or funny way. And then silent mode is a uh, lower power target. So OC mode's 170 watt power target, and then silent mode is 155. That's the difference between those. Let's get the screws out of here for the back plate. So these will secure the back plate to the PCB. Any more that I missed? Yes, two more, three more. Four more, five more, six more, okay. Seven more screws. Didn't see that one. Well, actually, it might be eight more screws. Let's make that nine more screws. <laughs> These are like invisible for some reason, those plated ones. Okay, that's what we wanna see. So uh, we didn't get the manufacture date, which is always kind of amusing to have. Manufacture date on this one is going to be August 23rd, I suppose that is, 2019. And it is currently, we got it on maybe September 8th, I think, something like that, September 7th, somewhere in there. So uh, considering I had to ship from Asia to get to their California office and then to get to us, uh, that's not that far back and shows why none of these have been available because the press samples aren't even getting manufactured until just a couple weeks ago. So those should be popping up online soon. In fact, this one doesn't even have an, a barcode or a serial number anywhere on it. There were no serial numbers on the box or anything. Uh, but yeah, it's early sample. Let's look at the components. There is an international rectifier 35217 controller on the back. That would be that one right there. Very common. That's been on pretty sure all of the ones we've opened so far. Layout for a lot of these boards, we've been having Buildzoid look at. He'll have a couple more analysis videos on our channel. If there's enough interest in this one, we'll ask him to maybe consider this one as well, if it's actually done anything different. PCB sizing, pretty similar to the Sapphire card we've looked at, the Pulse from the XT series, in terms of the uh, layout of things and the rest of it. VRM quality will have to be looked at separately by uh, Buildzoid. So in terms of the cooling solution, we can talk more about that. This one is uh, very standard. So two fans that are probably 90 millimeters. Let's check that. Maybe, yep, 90, 90 to 93 millimeter fans. So it's a standard larger fan. You can get a bit bigger than this and go 100, but that would lengthen the PCB and the cooler a bit more. The shroud is connected just with these four screws at the end. There's really no reason you'd need to take this off, except maybe if you have to replace the fans, and I guess that's a common enough reason 
with the age of these cards that we might as well take a look. So four of the spikier screws, the plastic screws that are digging into the shroud will come out. And is this loose? Yep, that was very easy. So this is so far well done by PowerColor for making it easily serviceable, whether intentional or not. But there's your fin stack. The cold plate is actually just screwed into these plates in here and secured that way. And the copper heat pipes, one, two, three, four, five, all route through the center, probably two to three, maybe let's say three of those are ending up contacting the silicon directly, the rest are accessories and not in a bad way, just less useful. And then the fans, <laughs> so these screws are securing the lower cage here, the trap to the top part of the shroud, it looks like. Uh, or is it securing the, oh, it's securing the embellishment. Okay, correction, those things are actually just securing this metallic looking embellishment, the chromed embellishment on the outside. And then the fan itself, let's remove one of those and just see what it is, just so we have a record for RMA purposes, if anyone wants to replace this in a few years down the line, if your fan dies or something. And just like I said earlier, if you want to pick up these tools, although we're only using one for this, uh, we do have a full set of tools, 10 of them, in our toolkit on store.gamersnexus.net. And the more advanced ones are spec for more difficult to open cards if you ever run into those. OK, so pulling the fan out. So if you do have to replace this fan, first D is the brand. This one was uh, August 16th, actually. And it's an FDC10U12D9-C. 0.45 amps is the number you need to know, 12 volts. So 12 volt, 0.45 amps, and uh, about 93 millimeters for the size. And that should have all the information you need if you, your fan ever dies. One more manufacturer data I just noticed, just for fun. Nothing really important here, but uh, August 19, or sorry, August 23rd. Is that 23rd or 28th? 23rd. August 23rd, 2019, for the at least the plate, if not the whole cooler. So this is all pretty new. It's not like they were sitting in, on a warehouse full of these waiting. This stuff was just uh, still getting made, so AMD really jumped the gun on, on launching Navi, it seems like, because the partners were nowhere close to ready. It took them basically two months. But they're here now, so uh, that's the teardown, the review we also have on the channel. So that's the teardown. As stated, this is really pretty simple. The cooling solution is very easy to take apart. It's very standard. Power color is not doing anything crazy here, nothing really particularly innovative. It's just standard design, which in this instance, in somewhat of a vacuum, mind you, but it, it did work well for cooling. Uh, it worked well specifically and unsurprisingly against this. The real question is going to be, does it continue to look good when matched against the other board partners? So it all comes down to relatives in comparing hardware. And relatively, versus the reference card, the power color unit's a significant upgrade for thermal and noise. Versus everyone else, we'll see. Check back for the reviews on those. And you can subscribe for more. Go to the channel to check out the review, store.cameraxis.net, if you'd like to pick up one of our toolkits like this one or the mod mats. And we also have medium-sized mod mats with GPU teardown notes on them. Or you go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching and supporting us. I'll see you all next time.